And you feel like God's holding over your head and you have to repent over it every day and you finally just say, I'm not going to try anymore. I'm just a failure. I can't do anything right. He comes to him and says, friends. Wow. Friends. He didn't walk out and say, hey, you bones. Hey, you backslidden. Hey, fellas, you think, you know who I am? No. He said, friends. You see, he called them friends the night of the last supper. That means that they were close to him, and he was close to them, and he's close to us. Abraham was called the friend of God. Moses spoke with God as a friend. And now he is, even after they failed to find out they're not even worthy to carry the gospel again, even after talking to God, see, 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 I can't drive this point of heaven. I've been in the altar before and I've prayed with people and as i prayed with them, they asked God to forgive them. I heard them. I heard them. I heard them say, God, I, I, you got to help me get back up. I'm sorry for what I did. And then you watch and they keep yourself regulated and the restriction on and the destruction mode going on and I'm a failure mode and they never really give it all they got again because they feel like God can't use them because they failed just too bad. They messed up. Let me tell you something. Anybody here messed up any worse than Simon Peter? Walk side by side with Jesus, act up, talking to him. And then he, he tells you, I'm going to be right here. And he goes, you're going to deny me three times before the cock grows. Anybody here done that? And then say, if I know him, let God strike me dead. <clears throat> That's pretty tight. Okay? Think about poor Samson. I mean, Samson, he had, he had everything in his fingertips. He was, a, he, was, he, was a, he was an awesome dude. But he winds up grinding meal with his eyes put out. But in between, when he pulled him out for sport, he says, just one more time, God. One more time. And God <laughs> say, Samson, you ain't worth my time. David, after all the mess he did, when he died, what did God say his testimony was? He was a man after his own heart. God calls you friends. Friends! That's a powerful, powerful thing. So, so look, just because you've blown it, just because you failed, number one, failure's not final as you wanted to be. And number two, it does not change our status with God. Amen. Number three, failure can be transformed into success. Did you know that? Amen. Uh, how many know that, as a matter of fact, you know, uh, I think about the Wright brothers. The Wright brothers were trying to get this, get, get, get this. <laughs> they didn't just, let me just say something about the Wright brothers. The Wright brothers just didn't invent the airplane. Because the airplane had been being trying to be invented for years. And there were some things that were even kind of close to what they had. Do you know what the Wright brothers invented? They discovered the science of flight. So you got the Wright brothers discovering the science of flight. And, and Orwell, Wilbur, one, they just couldn't seem to get to stay. They get off the ground, they couldn't do a whole lot with it. They couldn't get it turned. I mean, but, but they decided to go to Kitty Hawk. That's where most of the wind was at. So they left Ohio. They went to Kitty Hawk and, and where the wind was at. And one day, one day, Orwell, Wilbur, one, I can't remember which one, they still couldn't get any control with this thing. <coughs> and so he's sitting in the bicycle shop, and somebody come in to buy an inner tube. This is a little bit big for an inner tube box, just pretend it's in half. Pretend Bernie Sanders is the guy that cut this thing in half and get one of them. Okay. And so, while he's talking, he starts going. And as he's doing this while he's talking, all of a sudden, he goes, That's it. That's how to make the airplane a success. That's how I'll make it turn. And so when they go to Kitty Hawk, they fix it so the wings now do this. You see, fail, fail, fail. But it didn't mean 
that he was a failure. Transform into success. The Bible tells us in verse 6, he says, to throw out your nets. Throw out your nets again. They already had them out. They hadn't caught anything. They had a rough night. They're out there trying to fish. They hadn't caught anything. They're trying to do it their way. I told you one time before my favorite song back when I was 17 was old. Y'all remember this guy? He, he was kind of famous in some places. His name was Elvis Presley. I mean, I had a bad year when I was 17 because Elvis died and John Wayne died. John Wayne hurt me a whole lot more than Elvis did. One of the last songs Elvis had on the radio was The Grips. I had a few, but then again, too few to mention. I did it my way. That's hard to go around thinking, I did it my way. I did it my way. Then went to work at Procter again when they said, it's our way or the highway. And so I kept doing it my way. And then I got with God and God said the same thing. My way is the highway. <laughs> Try again. You see, there's no shame in trying to fail. There's no shame in that. Remember, all the grace. There was always a failure before there was a breakthrough. Anybody ever seen working for God? They didn't just, you see people on television got this mega ministry and think, man, you know, how, how, man, they got it made. I remember listening to uh, T.D. Jakes. How many likes T.D. Jakes? Awesome dude. He has like 10,000 people in his church and, and they're parking all around the block trying to get there and he's going he's all over the place. And Just last week, T.D. Jakes said, God told him that he would be preaching to a multitude. And for seven years, he wrote sermons that nobody heard. He said, God, have you blown it? I know y'all never said that. <laughs> God, were you mistaken? God, did I hear you? He said, for seven years, he couldn't get a door to open. At the end of seven years, then he couldn't get the doors to shut. You see, God's got the time. There's no shame. No shame in trying to tell him. The shame lies in being too afraid to try in the first place. Jonah, the word of the Lord came unto him the second time while he was in the belly of that fish, that whale. Wow. The thing that makes me that amazes me about Jonah, Jonah was in the fish three days before he cried out to God. I'd have cried out going down the, the fish's throat. <laughs> Talk about a hard head. Amen. So now, here, here's the problem to tell you about. They caught 153 fish. Wow. Did you know there's 153 known at that time and known, known for years all the way up through the first century? There was 153 species of fish in the Mediterranean Sea. 153 species. Now, Simon Peter didn't know that. God did. And so, when God calls them out to throw that net out, God made sure they catch 153 fish. Wow. There's 153 fish in the Mediterranean. That's about Jerome, his early church father. So what I referred to was their success in evangelizing the world. That they were going to get them all. Don't think that you're not going to reach the world. You will. You will. Don't be afraid to try again. Matter of fact, I'm going to say something that's actually going to be kind of sound like it's harsh. And I don't mean for it to sound harsh. But some of us have never tried the first time. The reason we haven't tried the first time is because we saw somebody close to us try and get zapped. And so then we, instead of just risking getting zapped, we don't try at all. And it's a sad thing. A sad thing. The Bible says, at the white throne of judgment, we're going to be standing around it. Now, if you get the white throne of judgment, you're walking up to it, you're going to have a bad day. The Bible says that the Christians are going to go to the beam of judgment. The beam of judgment, the judgment seat of Christ. 
We're not going to be judged going to heaven or hell. We're going to be judged for our works. But in the white throne of judgment, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to hear your sin. You've already, if you already did, you've already been in Hades. And now you're going to be pulled up, resurrected with your body. And now you're going to go into the lake of fire. But you get to hear judgment. You get to see what, what happened. What's going on. I heard a preacher one time say this and it tore me up. He said, can you imagine standing at the white throne of judgment? As Jesus is pronouncing judgment. And a man walks up. And he sees you. And when they give him his judgment, you're going to hell. He looks you right in the eye and says, why didn't you ever tell me? Why didn't you ever tell me about Jesus? Why didn't you ever insist? Why didn't you? As if he had marched off to the lake of fire. Wow. You see, I guarantee if you were to look in your net today, if you try again, you're going to see 153 fish. Meaning completion. God's going to take care. He's going to do the good work he started in you. He's going to finish. Failure does not mean that you are a failure. Number four, watch this. Yeah, I'm getting close. See? Y'all see? And it's only, it's only uh, 20 to 11. <laughs> failure does not mean you're a failure. Remember that? Your personal self-worth? Just because you failed does not mean you are a failure. To fail is an event. A failure is an attitude. I do not want the attitude of a failure. Yes, I failed. Praise God, I failed. I blew up so much I could open up a dynamite factory. So watch. He says, we're, getting, we're nearing the end now. Get ready. We've only got 14 slides left. I'm playing. Look. Come and have breakfast. Wait a minute. If I was a failure, would Jesus want me to go eat with him? I mean, it's one thing for him to call me. It's another thing for him to, to, to help me catch more fish. But then it's really something when he says, look, not only are you my friend, I want you to come have lunch with me. I want you to sit down. We're going to have breakfast. I want you to eat with me. We're going to gather together. You see, 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 this is awesome. Because the communal meal of you know, close friendship is depicted so beautifully. And just think about this thing. You know, people talk about how, you know, uh, uh, when I got saved, I stopped drinking and carrying on and started eating. <laughs> Amen? <laughs> Amen. So, so watch, watch, watch. Eating is synonymous with fellowship. Amen? Think about the, the bread and the fish remind them of feeding the 5,000. They remind them of the Passover. They remind them of the two disciples that saw them on the Emmaus Road. Failure, listen, failure does not have to permanently scar your life. It doesn't have to permanently scar your life. Now, now you know why you get a scar, don't you? You know, you get a scar because, because when you have an injury, all of a sudden the white blood cells, that's why you get the scab up there. The white blood cells are going up and trying to raise to, to, to heal your body. And as it goes to heal your body, then that scar actually is not there to mark your injury. It's there to mark your healing. Well, come on. Oh, y'all, y'all ought to be jumping now. Y'all ought to be throwing babies in the air. That's what I got said. Don't throw any babies in the air. Look, the scar is not to mark your injury. The scar is to mark your healing. Wow. So now, yes, you got scars. If I think it's marking my injury, then it's going to mess me up. But I know that it's marking my healing. Praise God. Praise God. On my arm for that car wreck. Remember that car wreck I had those years ago? I still have the S. On my arm. I said, God, don't be salvaged. <laughs> <laughs> I can't get now, I, I can't get any, I can't get any collision insurance anymore, but I can get liability. Scarred. Saved. Salvaged. Special. Son. Wow. Now before it healed, it hurt. And I remember, I'm a, Brandon, don't feel bad, brother. 
I remember I was in there trying to do the Easter thing. We were practicing, and I had that scar, and it was still still hurting. And Brandon was climbing out of the tomb or something. I think it was Brandon. It was either Brandon or it was Brandon. <laughs> and he reached out and he grabbed my arm, and he grabbed that scar. Remember that, Brandon? You don't? <laughs> he grabbed that scar, and he hadn't finished healing yet. And I went, oh! And he said, I'm sorry, man. And I'm trying to help him. See, it doesn't mark my injury. It marks my healing. And God give me that is. Praise mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I was in Walmart two days ago, and one of the clerks said, Can I ask you a question? I said, Yes, yeah. a personal question. I said, Okay. You can ask me for my pen number. <laughs> he said, Can you show me your arm? Okay. He says, No. He says, been kind of down lately. And I know God's got something. He said, can you show me your ass? <laughs> you see, scars to a Christian marks our healing, our safety, our protection. Just don't let Brandon grab it while you're stealing it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll play with you, Brandon. That was fine. You didn't know. Okay. <laughs> He's going, so what? It was 50 years ago. It's okay. All right. In Christ, all things pass away. All things become new. Jesus' invitation is, come and have breakfast. And then number five, somebody said, praise God. <laughs> Failure does not disqualify you for service. Just because you fail, don't mean God can't use you. Matter of fact, I would rather have somebody that failed work with me than somebody that never failed. <coughs> I've noticed guys in the ministry. I noticed guys at work. I noticed guys in all kinds of things. I remember even hearing Daniel talk about it. Over, I think James is about over, um, uh, over when he was over in Afghanistan. He'd much rather have a guy who had some experience with him. So if they got the bind, the person with experience was not prone to run. They were prone to be there. Because they had been through something and it shaped them. I see people in ministry. When everything was going great, everything was lucky, door, everything was fine. Man, it was awesome. But when they started going through things, hard things, their ministry. They thought their ministry was doing this. They didn't realize as they started going through things, their ministry started doing this. Because now you got a message. Your mess is a message. Something special. You see, Jesus gave him a second call. Four years earlier, he said, Come follow me. And and, and he found he's God with a second chance. So watch this. He goes and asks him, Do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? How many times did he ask him, Do you love me? Three. Don't you think there's a purpose for that three times? How many times did he deny it? Three. He denied it three times. Jesus didn't come out and say, Dude, you blew it. Matter of fact, you didn't just blow it. You really blew it. You blew it three times. You were the man I thought was the man. I thought you would never mess up. You're the dude. No, no, he just said, do you love me? Feed my lambs, do you love me? Feed my sheep, do you love me? Feed my sheep. He said, for each denial, I want you to feel that I have forgiven you and have not disqualified you for service. Feed my lambs, feed my sheep, feed my sheep. Now let's go over here and start getting ready. On the day of Pentecost, 50 days after the resurrection, on the day of Pentecost, and Peter stood up and preached. How many were saved? 3,000. He denied it three times. Jesus asked him three times, do you love me? In his very first message, 
3,000 souls was saved. Wow. Our God's got a second chance. It's awesome. You see, here's his principle. The God of the second chance. We saw it with Jonah. God called him the second time. Jeremiah, God spoke to him the second time. Let me just show you something. Let me get ready to close this out. No matter whatever failure you have experienced, God calls us to get back up by grace. You think God can't use you, that you've actually wore out your welcome with you? That you've gone farther than you've ever gone before, and now God just has written you off? No, God hadn't written you off, especially. Let me just give you a little, little hint here. If you still feel bad about it, if you still have that hurting in your heart, if you still have that hunger and that wonder, it's not too far gone because God's still there and He's still convicted. He wants us to get back to work for Jesus. You see, God's not finished with us here. Just a matter of days. There he is. There's Peter saying, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have I give unto thee. In the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. The same one that went down is now being used the very first miracles. That's another amazing thing. Before Jesus died, he went down. Peter did. And stayed down. The very first miracle. Shackles off. 